Hello, my name is Peter Madeka. I'm taking Distributed Multimedia, BIT 4203. Today's chapter is going to be compression. Last week, we had a look at video and animation. So today, we'll have a look at, we had a look at how uh, those files are huge, files in distributed multimedia are big, and those files need to be managed. That is why compression is very important in distributed multimedia. So today's chapter is going to be on compression. So the first thing that we'll start by doing is by defining what compression is. So this is about the size of files. The files are big. They cannot be handled without being compressed. If they were, then it would be very difficult to store those files and to transfer those files over computer networks. So that is why the files need to be compressed so that they can be made smaller for easier transmission. So we start by defining what compression is. Compression is a technique that is used in computing to reduce the size of a file. And it is all over, it is applied in computing in all fields, but mainly in multimedia because the files are very big. So when a file is compressed, we say it takes, it occupies less space. Now that helps us to move the files, that helps us to transfer the files over the internet, that helps us to transfer the files over computer networks. So what we will do, there are two primary types of data compression. We have what we refer to as file compression and media compression. So file compression, these are the normal files that we use, PDA files, Word files, those files can be compressed and we do compress them every day. We also have media files that need to be compressed. They are separated because the normal files, the PDA files, the Word files are smaller, but uh, media files are bigger than the normal files. So usually under normal circumstances when we are uh, interacting with the media, with multimedia content, that content will interact with it when it is compressed. And that is why it is important we understand how the actual compression works. There are several uh, algorithms involved in compression of both files and multimedia and media files. We'll look at two of them but there are quite a number, but I've picked only two that are used commonly in uh, compression of media files. Compression can be categorized into two categories, two broad ways. We have what we refer to as lossless compression, and we have what we refer to as lossy compression. I'll differentiate the two. In lossless compression, the file is compressed in such a way that when it is decompressed, you do not lose anything. And that is uh, from the name, lossless. So when the file is compressed using lossless compression, when it is decompressed, you don't lose anything. You get the exact copy, the exact file that was originally compressed. But on the other hand, with lossy compression, when you compress the file, it is compressed in such a way that the algorithm that is used to compress that file it works in such a way that when you decompress a file, there are some aspects of the file that are lost. But what is lost is very insignificant. But there is a difference between how the two uh, categories work. So you have lossless compression, which basically actually uh, is used when you're compressing things like PDF files or Word files. Because you don't want a letter or an email that you have sent to someone or an attachment that you have sent to someone to have some missing words, some missing letters. So with lossless compression, it is used mainly with uh, files, PDF files, with word files, any other things that, that looks like a document. But with lossy compression, most of multimedia is compressed using lossy compression. But it is also important to note that uh, algorithms in modern computing that are used for, lossless co for lossy compression do not, they work in such a way that you do not, the user does not use, lose so much of quality when it comes to the compressed file. So lossless is used for, you don't lose any quality in lossy 
compression, there is some quality that is lost, but it is not much. So it doesn't mean that if it is a picture and it's compressed, what you get is a distorted, a distorted picture. No. It is going to look the same, but there are some features that maybe you might not be able to recognize that they are not there from the original. But if you are to compare the two, the original and the compressed, then there will be a slight difference when you use lossy compression. Okay, so, so in lossy compression, the main aim is to obtain the best possible fidelity. You get the best possible product from the original one, but not the exact original. That is the difference. With lossless, you get the exact original when you decompress it. Okay, so I, I've got a diagram there that shows the different compression techniques. So we have on the left hand side what we call entropy encoding. That is lossless. On the right hand side we have what is called source coding. That is lossy. So there are several uh, algorithms there. You have got on the entropy encoding, you have you have repetitive sequence suppression, very simple, which has got zero length suppression and run length encoding. I'll briefly look at those two. But practically on the other side of entropy encoding, you have statistical encoding, which uses pattern substitution, and Shannon Fano together with Huffman coding. So I will look at the two, Shannon Fano and Huffman coding, the two algorithms most commonly used in compression uh, today. On the right hand side you have source coding which has got three different types of uh, algorithms, transform coding, differential coding, vector quantization. Uh, on transform coding you have FFT and DCT. Uh, those are different types but I will not concentrate on the right hand side which is lossy. I will concentrate on the two, Shannon Fano and Huffman coding. There are quite a number of algorithms that are used in uh, complexion, uh, in compression, but mainly I will focus on Shannon Fano and uh, Huffman coding. So on now on the repetitive sequence suppression, there are two: zero length suppression and run length suppression. Very encoding. Uh, Very briefly, I'll just demonstrate how simple repetition suppression now under repetitive sequence suppression so here basically we know most of the text files when they are being uh, developed they contain data that is repetitive now compression is all about data that is repeated in actual sense you want to make manage the data that is repeated. So anything that is repeated, that is what needs to be managed. That is what needs to be represented differently so that you can talk of compression. So with simple rep re repetition suppression, what happens is like you have a number there, 894, then you have got a series of zeros. That is just a big uh, number. That number in using simple repetition uh, suppression can be replaced with something like 894 then F, letter F, then 32. What that means is now letter F is what is referred to as the flag for zero. Letter F replaces the zeros. There are quite a number of zeros there, actually 32. But now if you don't want to deal with that file in, with having all those 32 zeros, so you want to manage the 32 zeros because that is what is repeated. So in compression, it's all about what has been repeated. So here, you can represent that number by using 894, then F represents, is a flag that rep represents the zeros, then the 32 is the number of times that the zeros are repeated. That is a very simple one, but in media compression, that will not work. So where F is a flag for zero, and 32 denotes the number of times that uh, the number zero is repeated. So that is a very simple repetition suppression algorithm. But so on another one, you have run length encoding. With run length encoding, 
this is applied to images. Now, how it works is very simple. I want to demonstrate that with an example. So, for example, the original sequence, sequ series of numbers, ones, twos, threes, and another one, twos, rep repeated. This can be encoded, or this can be compressed, as the first number is one. So what you do is you look at what is repeated. So the first one, we have one. Then one, comma four, the four represents the number of times that one is repeated. So that is the first series. Comma, then another series is two. So two is the number that is repeated, and it is repeated three times. So the three, so what is on the right-hand side is the frequency. How many times is it repeated? So you can do that for three, it is repeated six times. For one, again, it's repeated four times. For two, it's repeated four times. You can't ha say one is repeated, this is four and this is four, eight times, because that will distort the sequence when de regenerating the original, uh, the original format. So it is important that the numbers or the characters follow each other in the way they, they are, the original file was. So that is a very simple uh, suppression algorithm. Now, with lossless compression, we also have what we call pattern substitution. So with pattern su substitution, basically you look at a pattern and you substitute. What I want to do is to use uh, an example there. I want to have a look at the Shannon Fano algorithm, which is lossless, which is an algorithm that is lossless in media compression. Now, we say Shannon Fano is the godfather of compression uh, in computers. Now, how does that algorithm work? How does Shannon Fano compress uh, media files? So it's very simple. It's got something to do with uh, what we call binary trees, and I'll show you how to actually create those trees. The Shannon Fano algorithm together with uh, Huffman encoding, those are two very important algorithms. The basics is about trees, binary trees, but how you generate the binary tree in Shannon Fano is slightly different from how you generate the binary tree in Huffman encoding. So the Shannon Fano algorithm, uh, there are two steps. So you're given a series of symbols that you need to compress. So the first thing is, depending now on the series of symbols that you have been given, characters that you have been given to encode, to compress, sort the symbols according to the frequency count of their occurrences. So basically, we arrange those symbols according to the number of times that each symbol is repeated. That is what frequency is all about. So sort the symbols according to the frequency count of their occurrences. Number two, recursively divide the symbols into two parts, each with approximately the same number of counts until all parts contain only one symbol. And the best way to demonstrate that is with an example. And I will get to go to an example shortly. So this is what is referred to as a binary tree. So a binary tree has got parents has got children. That is what we'll focus on. In both cases, Shannon Fano and uh, Affman, they are both children and they are both uh, their parents. But how you build the tree, the binary tree, is, is slightly different. So here is an example of symbols that you have been given and you have been told, compress that or encode that using Shannon Fano algorithm. So the characters, uh, in the word speaker. So speaker has got seven letters. Okay, the frequency count of the symbols is shown in the table below. So here, the total number of symbols are seven. So there are seven characters there in the word speaker. Now, we say we arrange those symbols according to their frequencies. So the first is S, so the frequency is one, repeated only once. 
uh, P is repeated only once, E is repeated twice, A is once, K is once, and R is repeated once. You can even be given a sentence, you can be given a paragraph, you can be given an entire paragraph, an entire document to, to compress. So how does now Shannon Fano work from here? So once you come up with the tree, the next thing that you need to do is to arrange these symbols starting from the one with the highest frequency. So E is the one with the highest frequency, it's repeated twice, the rest are only appearing once. So you start now by building the binary tree. So what you are saying is, you divide the tree, the first time, into two parts. So you have a left side of the tree and the right side of the tree. And of course you have what we call the parent. So now, on the left hand side, we have got E and S. So we combine E and S with a combined frequency of 3. So you add these two, you get 3. On the right hand side, we have the rest P, A, K, R, with a combined frequency of 4. So what is important is you need to make sure that these ones, these pairs that you are getting here, the total is as close as possible. So it could be 4 and 4, or it could be 5 and 4, it could be 6 and 5. But they need, the bottom line is these totals need to be as close as possible. So you just divide it, you can even say ESP, which is 4, and AKR, which is 3. But yes, the other way. You can also start with ES with 3, and P, AKR with 4. So that is the first part of the tree. So the first division yields two parts. ES with 4, we count of 3, and P, AKR with a total count of 4. Next is now improving on the tree. So we started here. So we are starting at the top of the tree in Shannon Fan. So you have, you can see PAKR 3 and 4. The total here is 7. The total of th these 3 and these 4 is 7. So you denote it at the, at the root, which is as a parent. Now, after that, now the ES, you come to the left hand side of the tree and you start breaking it down into its individual components. So here, we'll break this because there are only two. We'll break this into E with a frequency of two and S with a frequency of one. So on the left-hand side, our tree is done. Here, remember, it says eventually what you get are individual units. So, uh, Okay, so the right hand side, we have 4. So we divide it into 2. So we have PA with a frequency total of 2 and KR with a total frequency of 2. So here, this is not complete. The right hand side of the tree is not complete because we need to break it down until each, each child contains a single element. So the next step, of course, we are going to break this into P and A. And we are going to break this one into K and R. So this is P, A is broken down into P with one frequency of one, A with a frequency of one. K, R is also broken down into K with a frequency of one and R with a frequency of one. After that, the next step is to assign values to these branches here. So the left-hand side of the tree is usually allocated or assigned a zero. The right-hand side of the tree is assigned a one. So if you look here, you will see any branch to the left has been given a zero. Any branch to the right has been given a one. So this is to the left, it is a zero. This is to the left, it is a zero. This is to the left, it is a zero, even though it is on the, on the right-hand side. But as long as it branches to the left, that is going to be assigned a zero. If it is on the right hand side, that is a one. And these are the values that we are going to use to construct now the final tree that is going to be used 
to encode and decode uh, our original file. So after that, now we have got, that is a single element, that is a single element. Everywhere we have single elements. So basically our tree is complete. Now, how do we use that tree? So now, this table, I will summarize it against the last, the final uh, tree there. So for letter E, to get letter E, we need to start from the roots. We move to the left, which is one zero, and another left, which is another zero. So letter E is actually represented by zero zero. Letter S is represented by zero and one. So S is going to be zero one. Letter P is going to be one zero zero. Letter A is going to be one zero one. Letter K is going to be one one zero, and letter R is going to be one one one. So that is the tree. That is what gives you the compressed or the encoded file. So if you look at this table now, it just summarizes what we have done. So the symbol there, so you have got ES, P, A, K, E, R. So ES is repeated twice. Uh, the code for ES is now as compressed is zero, 00. And from the tree, we have seen that. If you follow the tree now to get letter E, you go twice to the left, zero, 00. So letter S is zero, 01. Letter P is 100. Zero, zero. A is 101. K is 110. And R is 111. What is important is to determine. What, how does that algorithm work? Has it done any compression? Yes, it has. Now, the number of bits used, that is to compress the file. And we will compare it with the original file. So here, we are talking of four bits. And this is measured in bits. We are talking of four bits. Why? Because the code for A, E, letter E, is zero, 00. That is two bits times the frequency, which is two. So we get four bits. Uh, for letter S, we get two, which is basically these two bits times one. Again, this one is three bits times one, so it is three there. This is three, three, and three. And in other cases, you'll even get five. You'll get six. You'll get seven. It will depend on what is being, how big the uh, characters are being compressed. So basically, these are the total number of bits. This is the size of the compressed file. And in total, the total number of bits is, is 18. If you add up all those, you get 18 bits. So the compressed file has got a size of 18 bits. And you know bits, that is the smallest unit of uh, storage in a computer. So if it is 18 bits, we need now to compare it with the original file so that we can see whether there is any saving in terms of space instead of so storage. So now, if you look at the original letter, the original word, it was made of seven characters. But now, those seven characters, there are seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because E is repeated twice. So here it is represented with the repetitions. So there are seven characters, but standard, any character is represented using eight bits, not, not two, not three. So basically to get the size of this uh, word without compressing it, you multiply the 7 by 8, which is 56 bits. So the size, the original file of the size of this file, of this letter, is 56 bits. So if you want to see how much compression has been achieved, you just divide the 56 bits by, by 18. Because 18 is now the compressed file. So you can see there is a saving of almost 3, 3 times. Something like that. Yes, three point something compression rate. So that is very, very impressive. So in Shannon Fado, you start the tree from the top. On the other side, when you look at Huffman encoding, the tree is constructed from the bottom up. So that is Shannon Fado. And any, so this just basically talks about what I've said, the compression ratio and all that. So it is 56, the number of bits. Total, the original file is 56 bits. The compressed is 18. So you divide 56 by 18, you get 3.11. That is the compression uh, ratio. The next algorithm is what we refer to as the Huffman 
coding. And with Huffman coding, it works the opposite of Shannon Fano. So instead of starting the tree from the top, it builds the tree, it constructs the tree from the bottom. So it doesn't start from the root, it starts from the children. So here, uh, the principle is to use a lower number of bits to encode the data, and the best ex uh, thing to do is to show that using an example. So the Afman now is briefly summarized. Bottom-up approach, so you start from the bottom up. In Shadow and Final, you start from the top to the bottom. So initialization puts all nodes in an open list and keep it sorted. So if you have been given any symbols, put them in what we are referring to as an open list. Then that list needs to be sorted. It needs to be sorted alphabetically. Repeat until the open list has only one node left. So basically, you start from the bottom and you construct it upwards until you have a final, a final node at the top. So it will look like the Shannon Fano tree, binary tree, but the mode of constructing it is different from the way you construct the Shannon Fano uh, algorithm. So uh, there is an example there. Uh, basically, the characters there and the number of times they have been repeated. Uh, so what you do is, so that is basically A, E, I, O, U, S, T. Those are the characters, and the frequencies are there. Uh, after that, you need to arrange them by the frequencies, starting with the smallest frequency. So T has got a frequency of 1. So it is the one with the smallest frequency, I think. Yeah, T, frequency of 1. Then O has got a frequency of 3. U, 4, A, 10, like that, until the one with the highest frequency. Then after that, arrange all the nodes in increasing order of their frequency value. So basically, you are starting from the smallest, moving upwards. Now, here, what we do here, so that I can give you a guide on how to construct this tree. You combine any of these two. They have to be combined in such a way that, you see now if I combine T and O, I'll get a total of 4. So this is T with 1, O with 3, I get a total of 4. After that, I can decide now to combine these 4 with these 4 of you to get a total of 8. Actually, that is how now I'm going. I cannot combine 4 and 12. The difference is too big. So they have to be as close as possible. Of course, it depends on what is being, uh, is being compressed. And you can see the T O there, you get 4. Then the 4 for U is combined with these 4, you get 8. Like that, now 8, next. 8 is combined with 10, you get 18. 10 is for A, you get 18. After that, uh, the 12 and 13, so 18 is there. 12 and 13 for I and S are combined, you get 25. You are left with 15 for E. After that, now remember you have these 18. You have 25, you have 15, and you have these 18. So the next thing that you need to do is to combine, uh, you have 15 there, 18, and 25. So combine these two, you get 33. So you have a 33 there, and 25. Finally, you just need to combine these two to get the final node, which is going to be 50, 58. So the final tree is going to look something like that. So you have 58, then you have all these others. Remember now, after you do that, the tree is complete. Each one, you have got a final, which is a parent there, and each node is made up of a single element. So what you need to do now, now is to allocate the ones and zeros accordingly. To the left, it's a zero. To the right of the tree, it's a one. So you do zero, zero there, uh, zero there, one there, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, like that. So that you can come up with something similar to what we got with Shannon Fano algorithm. So the final tree should look something like that. And that is what is going to be used to determine uh, the compressed, the size of the compressed file and how to obtain the individual characters. So eventually the compression ratio there, you're going to get something like that. So the code for A is going to be triple one like that. So I've summarized that in that table. And the number of bits used there, so the total number of bits used to compress a file is 146 bits. Original text is 58 characters times 8 bits. 
which is 464 bits. So we have compressed a 464 bit file to 146. The compression ratio, again, you can see, is something to do with 3.17. Not bad. So it will depend on which, there is also an enhanced version of this, but it will depend on which uh, algorithm you want to use. Of course, here it's all about also the developer deciding this is a compression algorithm that I intend, I intend to use. So also, again, which one is going to give you the biggest saving in terms of storage space? Uh, also, how long is it going to take to, to be processed? There are also other factors that need to be uh, put into, into consideration. So basically, that is, uh, those are two very important algorithms for compression, uh, Shannon Fano and Huffman encoding. The next class should be on uh, synchronization. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.